Hello, my name is Arun John and I am a data protection specialist for Dell Technologies. Today, I'll be going through a brief overview of Dell Technologies Apex Backup Services and show you a demo on how to backup endpoints using Apex. So let's get started. So what is Apex Backup Services? Quite simply, Apex Backup Services is a cloud-based data protection solution. With this solution, we can provide data protection for various sources, including endpoints, such as your desktop and laptop, or your mobile devices. We support both Windows and Mac OS, or for mobile devices, we support both Android and iPhone. We also support tablets as well. And we support uh, uh, SaaS applications. This could be your Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, Salesforce, uh, and also we support your workloads in the data center and your remote sites. Now this could be your uh, Windows Server or Linux Server or your VMs on various hypervisors including Hyper-V, VMware, or it could be a NAS Server, or it could be a Windows File Server, uh, or it could be a database. So what we do is give you a 100% a SaaS platform called as the Apex Cloud Platform, which is built on top of the public cloud vendor AWS. So what we effectively provide you with this offering is, number one, we provide you data protection which is nothing but backup and restore. And for some use cases, we also provide disaster recovery, especially for those workloads which are VMware based. We also give you governance with respect to things like GDPR, helping you understand where your data is and where does it sit. And finally, data intelligence, enabling you to understand your data. So if you're attacked by things like ransomware, etc., you recover quickly and easily. Again, all these benefits without you needing any infrastructure. You literally are logging on into the Apex Backup Console and managing your data protection from there. No hardware to maintain, nothing to patch, no hassles of capacity planning and of performance tuning. Because it's built on AWS, we leverage the elasticity, scalability, and redundancy that AWS offers, helping you with on-demand scalability along with predictable and controllable cost. So here's a high-level workflow of how the backup uh, flows from endpoints uh, to the cloud. I mean, to be honest with you, you as a customer really don't need to know all these things uh, because this is all taken care of by the Dell Technologies Apex Backup Services. Uh, but for the sake of uh, completeness, I'm going to show you as to what happens behind the scenes. So uh, it all starts with installing an agent. We call that as an in-sync agent. That in-sync agent is installed on each of those endpoints or mobile devices which you want to back up, and that agent is registered with our cloud master server. Now, the cloud master server is made up of multiple EC2 instances uh, sitting in a cluster, and uh, the data and it's sitting underneath the database, uh, which is an RDS database. Now, it is this master server which ho holds all the configuration uh, configurations uh, regarding you know what clients to back up, when to back up, how to back up, and which region to back up as well. So all that information is there on the cloud master server. So when, com when time comes to backup, the cloud master server will ask the agent on the endpoint to send its backup to the specified region. The agent will um, do a global dedupe. It will compress the data, doing a source side deduplication. It will encrypt the data. And it will send the data uh, to the storage nodes in that specified region. Again, the storage nodes are nothing but you know, data movers. They are also EC2 instance which uh, can be scaled up and down using the auto scale feature of AWS. And from the storage node, the dedupe compressed data will land on S3 in an encrypted format. Uh, and the metadata regarding that backup is actually stored separately uh, from the data. It's actually stored on the uh, DynamoDB database, which is a NoSQL database from AWS, uh, well known for its uh, uh, scalability and performance. So again, so the data is on the S3 and all the metadata and the DDIP database is actually kept on the DynamoDB database. Uh, the S3, as we all know, is infinitely scalable, so there is no more um, those challenges of running out of capacity. So you can back up as much as you want uh, on S3. And finally, by the nature of um, S3, uh, the data which lands on S3 is actually replicated uh, across three availability zones uh, within that uh, same region, giving you that high availability of your backup data. Now, that's uh, a high-level uh, overview of the backup workflow. Now, this backup workflow remains the same regardless of the use case, regardless of whether you're backing up an endpoint, regardless of whether you're backing up a, a SaaS application or uh, some workload in the data center. Now, one question we often get asked about is how is... Uh, 
endpoints licensed for Apex Backup Services. Now, as far as licensing is concerned, there are only three things which uh, we need to remember. First is uh, the endpoint backups are licensed on a per user basis. So one user gets one license, but that same license you can go ahead and mul uh, backup multiple devices. So as an example, let's say if you have a user one who's got both a laptop and a mobile device, then one endpoint active license will be consumed when the first device, laptop or mobile, is activated. Now, it's important to remember the activation of the second device will not result in the consumption of another license. So one user, one license with which multiple devices can be backed up. The second concept is the storage capacity. How much capacity does a user have to store all his backup? Now, by default, every user gets 50 gigs of storage capacity, but one can utilize the total capacity available in the storage pool allocated. Now, what does that mean? So this is best explained using an example. Let's say you have an organization with two users, user one and user two. Each of them has about 50 gigs of backend storage available, which is the default storage. Now the total storage pool available, however, is the sum of the backend storage for both users. So 50 gigs plus 50 gigs, which is 100 gig. Therefore, user one and user two is not limited by 50 gig backend storage anymore, but they are limited by the 100 gig which is the total available storage capacity for that organization. And the last concept is the preserved user license. This is specifically for users who have been using Apex Backup Services, but has left the organization and the business now wants to retain their backups for various reasons. Now it's for that particular use case, we have brought about the preserved user license. Now it's important to understand the preserved user license is much cheaper than the active license. Now, by default, 10% of the active workload license is allocated as free preserved workload, workload license. Now, as, a, as an example, if an organization has 1,000 active workload license which are allocated, then 10% of that 1,000, which is 100, will be allocated as free preserved workload license. Now again, um, if you want to increase uh, the number of preserved workload license above and beyond the 10%, you can actually go ahead and buy them in incremental fashion as and when you need it. So what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and back up endpoints using Apex Backup Services. But before that, I want to make sure that uh, we understand the differences between profiles and users in the Apex Backup Console. So in the uh, Apex Backup Console, we have a concept called as profile. Now, the profile is the one which dictates the behavior of the user. So what the user can back up, when to back up, how long to keep the backups for, and which region the backup should land. Uh, so all those things are defined in the profile, and you can create as many profiles as you want. Once the profile is created, you can then go ahead and attach users to that particular profile. Once the users are attached to the profile, we go ahead and add those devices which needs to be backed up. And that's it. So what we'll do next is... Uh, in the Apex Backup Console, we'll go ahead and create a profile, and then we'll attach some users to it, and then we'll go ahead and back up some endpoints. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and sign in into the Apex Backup Console using uh, the email address and password. Now I signed in as a cloud administrator who is a super user uh, within the Apex Backup Console. Now we do support various other sign-in options, including single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. Now, although I have signed in as a super user, we also support uh, role-based access control as well. So we can restrict users to perform only certain functions. For example, manage only endpoint backup or manage only the SaaS backup or manage only the file server backup. So the solution set which protects endpoint backups is called InSync. So let's go ahead and click on endpoints. And as a first step, we will go ahead and create a profile. So click on profile. I say create new profile. So we'll give it a, a, a name. We will not restrict the number of users connected or attached to the profile. Zero means any number of users can be attached to the profile. We'll also leave the backup inactivity alert to seven days. That means if any user is not backed up for the last seven days, an alert will be sent. Under user privacy and access, we will allow the admin access to user backup data. We will also allow the admin access to logs as well. We'll give uh, the end user the ability to restore his data from the web browser. Uh, we do have an option to enable backup and restore for the end users from the mobile devices. But for the purpose of this demo, we will leave it unchecked. 
click on next by default uh, apex backup services chooses my documents in the desktop folder uh, as a source for backing up uh, the data uh, and should you wish to exclude any files from uh, those backups you can do so by clicking on global exclusion and choosing the file type for example if i choose audio files as the file type these type of files will be excluded from the backups now for the purpose of this demo what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncheck uh, the my documents folder and the desktop folder and instead ask the end user to add his own folder for backup and that can be configured under the user settings uh, next is uh, scheduled uh, schedule and retention uh, it simply says when to backup how long uh, to retain the backup for and what is the bandwidth available for the user to backup data loss and prevention uh, is the ability to trace a device if it's lost and auto delete the corporate data from that device if it's lost we also have an option to encrypt the data on the end user's device user settings simply gives um, the the configuration or the options which the end user can do or cannot do so for example uh, can you pause the backup can you cancel the backup can you change the backup schedule all that can be configured in here um, add add backup folders uh, i've enabled it therefore the end user can now add his own folders to backup i have not restricted the end user um, for the amount of backup storage is uh, which is available for him to backup should you wish to restrict that you can enter the quota per user. Also, the number of devices he can back up using his license is restricted to five, so you can actually back up five devices should you wish to using that license. So once that's all configured, I'll go and click Next. We will leave uh, the Enable SAS, back, uh, SAS apps backup as is. Uh, also won't enable uh, backing up of any shares. And we'll say click on Finish. So as you can see, our profile uh, named Endpoints is created. So if you click on Endpoints, we'll give you the details of uh, that profile. So at the moment, there's no user connected. Therefore, there's no backup data also. Also gives you all the details uh, of the things we configured uh, in the profile a minute ago. Should you wish to edit some of these, you can always do that by clicking on the Edit button. So as a next step, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add an user to this profile and start backing up the data. So the users can be added to the profile in many different ways. Uh, some of the multiple ways which we can add users are through Active Directory or LDAP on-prem or Azure AD or through identity providers like Okta or through Skim provisioning. So we do also have an option to import the user using a CSV file. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the user manually. So I'll click on Add User and enter the email address of the user this has to be unique across the organization enter the name of the user uh, the profile to which this user will be connected to which is endpoints in our case the storage where the backups will land i'm going to leave the endpoint code to zero and all the others uh, at their default values and click on add as you can see a new user arun john has been added now if you click on arun john uh, who's a user you'll get more details as to how this user was added uh, so in this case I was added manually uh, what is the quota uh, limit if there is any and uh, the the name of the profile to which the user is attached to and if any devices are connected to the user so what we'll do next is uh, we will go ahead and pretend uh, to be this user Arun John and uh, he'll be receiving a welcoming email from uh, Apex Backup Services we'll go ahead and download that in sync agent and uh, we'll start backing up uh, the device so as you can see the end user Arun John has received a welcome email from Dell Technology Apex backup services with a link to activate the account and also to download the endpoint clients which is the in sync agent for him to back up start backing up his devices so as a first step let's go ahead and activate the account it's asking to enter the password And click on submit now that we have activated the account and updated the password successfully we'll go ahead and download uh, the InSync agent or the InSync client so let's go ahead and do that so it'll tell you which version uh, of InSync agent you want to download whether it's for Windows or Mac in my case it is down Windows so let's go ahead and click on uh, Windows and let's start downloading it so once it's finished downloading we'll go ahead and follow the steps of installing it 
okay the insync agent has finished downloading uh, what we'll go and do is now we'll go ahead and install it by following the instructions all right so we'll double click on the insync agent and uh, we'll select the language we'll accept the terms and conditions and we'll go ahead and install okay we have uh, now finished installing the agent very soon we should uh, see an icon appearing on the desktop what we will then do is uh, here it is the InSync agent so what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and configure uh, some uh, backups and we'll backup uh, this endpoint to the Apex Backup Services Cloud okay to start configuring uh, backup what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, click on the InSync icon see we go ahead and enter the email address to which it was registered to and the password so there's nothing to backup at the moment if you remember I did not include any folders to backup I unchecked the my documents in the desktop folder but however I gave the end user to add his own uh, folder so therefore I'm going to add a folder to backup so I'm going to click on add folder and choose a, a folder to backup so in this case I'm going to choose a folder named ABS demo and click next so it's got three files uh, I'm just going to add that in will soon say the size of the size of the folder and how many files are there so once I've uh, I'm satisfied with that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click backup so it's gonna initialize the backup and uh, very soon it will show me the status of the folder of, of the backup as you can see the backup uh, is now complete uh, we can get some details about those backup as well as to when it was started how many bytes was transferred and how many files were transferred you can also get some information about those backups uh, through the log files so now that we have completed the backup we will go ahead and do some restores so to do a restore i click on restore and it should open up a new window showing me a list of all the backups available for me to restore from so in my case there is only one backup so i'll go ahead and restore a particular file from that uh, from that backup but before i go ahead and do that uh, i also wanted to highlight that we also have a search uh, feature within uh, abs uh, endpoint backups wherein we can search for a backup for example i know that there is a file called www.sc inside this backup so if i go ahead and search for that particular file insync should be able to show me where that file is so as you can see it uh, it showed me when that backup was taken and uh, when it was last modified as well so should I wish to go ahead and uh, restore it from here I can do so as well now before I go ahead and restore what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, uh, delete the original file uh, from the original location so the file which I'm going to delete is the www.sc file so I'll go ahead and say shift delete so that it's no longer available so then what I'll do is I will uh, go back to my restore folder and try and restore the file back to the original location so that's the file I want to restore so when I click on restore I do have a, a few option one is either restore it uh, to the desktop or restore it to the original location or restore it to a custom location so in this case I'll go ahead and click on original location or confirm restore it's going to it's giving me giving me a warning that if i go ahead and restore it to the original location the file will be replaced um but i'm okay with that because uh, i've deleted the original file so i'll go ahead and say yes so the restore request has been created successfully we should see the restore status here it is um, so the restore is happening as we speak uh, once complete we should see that file back into the original location so the restore is complete and the file is back in its original location so that was a quick overview of apex backup services for endpoint backups so really quickly what we did was uh, we created a profile in the apex backup console added a user to that uh, profile and we created a data set we backed it up and we restored it as you can see it is a very simple uh, and easy method to back up your endpoints uh, using apex backup services that concludes the demo. I hope you enjoyed it.